Hey everybody, um, got myself a cordwood saw here, and I like a lot of the videos that are out there, but a lot of them don't explain much, so I'll just tell you what I've been, what kind of luck I've been having here. Um, I took an old Massey Ferguson here, and uh, we only, di I didn't have a, a rear differential to fit with it, so I ended up uh, taking a Farmall Cub differential and modifying the back there just a little bit so it'll stay right on it, and I built a drive shaft uh, uh, adapter there to change the PTO size, and uh, I got this old cordwood saw for about 50 bucks uh, at an auction and I, I built uh, uh, an idler pulley to keep my belt a little bit tight. I just got a, a regular rubber band there out of a uh, uh, V8 uh, Triton. Uh, it's a 5.4 liter Triton. It's one of those uh, serpentine belts and that bugger runs the saw pretty good and I've probably cut, I don't know, 15 or 20 cords of wood with that old belt and it was already 100,000 miles on it before I got started. I did have to change the original pulley here to downsize it so I would get a little more speed and it seems to be still working pretty good. I added to the table here and made a, a catch for the, the wood on the end and that seems to work pretty decent. I built a guard for it on the outside just out of scrap junk I had kicking around and hooked it to my three point hit. One other thing that was pretty handy is I, I put some lines every 16 inches on my table so that I can take my piece of wood and see where 16 is going to come. Now, you can have any any amount and uh, I'll be able to better divide up my piece of wood um, and keep them all about the same length. Uh, some of the fellas have uh, like an arm with a piece of chain hanging on it so that you can set it right against the end of it and then know right where it's going to uh, gonna come out for length. So that's pretty handy too. In no sense in not having some marks right on your table and know how long you're making stuff and get it a little closer. Uh, some of the things that I've learned about this as I've been studying it is the blade itself. This is a 30 inch blade and uh, uh, it has a, a tooth tooth count which is a little bit much for for doing a lot of real fast cross cut sawing but I want to thank the guy who uh, showed how to sharpen these and I learned quite a bit from that. Um, I did play with it a little bit and one of the things to remember about a blade is that it's dished. It has it has a slight curve to it to give it strength and it actually is dished towards the end part of the saw as it cuts. So while it's cutting remember that it wants to rub usually on the outside as you get a big piece of wood like this one here. As you get to the inside it wants to rub and that'll uh, change the blade speed just a little bit and it'll also warm up right in here and it'll make the blade a little uh, wobbly and as it heats up. So remember to keep your blades cool. I'll, I'll lubricate the outside of this with like some diesel fuel or something every now and then or some old oil I've got kicking around. WD-40 works pretty good on it. Any kind of lubricant on the outside of the blade will help like crazy. When you sharpen your teeth uh, well, another thing I've learned is make sure that your gullet, the bottom of your gullet, gets sharpened too so that it always stays the same. Inspect your blade for cracks that run down inside of it um, if for some reason it got pinched or anything. The other thing I look for is spots like right here where there's a slight bump in the blade right here. I brought this down and had it professionally hammered and they checked the tolerances and this 30 inch blade should run between 640 and 700 uh, RPM. Uh, for optimum everything out of it and critical speed you can tell when a blade reach critical speed it'll as it's chewing through the wood it'll start wobbling and it'll get a chatter to it then you know that you're you're working it hard and it's not turning fast enough uh, another thing is of course it can be turning too fast but uh, one other little thing that I did find out was that the set in the teeth on each side that make that if you have a tractor like this one it's 35 horse it's got a real good grip I have lots of power to this blade. I can have a little bit more set which makes it more forgiving so the core doesn't rub on the piece of wood while it's cutting. So that's fairly important. When you sharpen them, try and make sure and keep it as flat as you can. Keep that tip nice and sharp and uh, try not to dig at it too much with like a knife or something getting that sawdust out. Some sawdust will build up in here. Even I thought of maybe a, a bucket with some water dripping, a, a bottle with some water dripping on it to lubricate it is good. Green 
green wood will always cut better than dry wood. Uh, the greener stuff's the better. You can see with your sawdust here, it tells you what's going on with the blade. And we want to build up a little bit of gum right here, just down a little bit. The upper part, that's the part that's really doing all the cutting. And a lot of big cutting and cross cutting, you don't want too many teeth inside of the cut at once. And this has about five or six teeth in the cut when you're cutting something like this. That's kind of a lot. If anything, it should be two to four teeth. So the, the fewer teeth it has on it, and when they're big and tall and sharp and they have a good sized gullet on the bottom, they'll work better for cross cutting. The finer your teeth are and the more of them you have, the slower you'll have to saw and the more it'll, it'll, it'll work the blade hard to, to, and it'll also uh, get it to wobbling and you'll lose a little bit of speed. When it turns too slow, it'll really get to chattering. When it's working hard and turning too slow. Um, I try and keep it well greased. Uh, the other thing, a lot of these older saws, the hubs right where that sets, it's very important that that be turned and smooth and just as straight and square as possible. This blade, when I first put it on, when I would spin it around, it would have a wobble to it. So I ended up, instead of machining this, I ended up putting a 2000 shim right in the dip, uh, right in the hump on this side here. I would, I would put a, a, a pin on it and spin it around and th there's a hump in my, in my hub that shows up right here. I thought it was a blade, but it wasn't. It was the hub. I had the blade hammered and made sure that was good and flat and it was true and acting the way it should. It had the right proper dish in it and the right amount of tension to the spring steel. But the bottom right here, this hub should probably be turned. This is old machining work and it, it had a a slight wobble to it. My original pulley on this side also had a slight wobble so it would make a little vibration and that would show up in my cutting and the cutting wasn't real smooth. I did add to the table and made it longer to hold pieces, longer pieces of wood. I kind of like that better and I like the, the other adding the, the section on the outside here. That was real handy. If anything it probably ought to be a whisker lower than what you have here so that the blade doesn't uh, get pinched by the wood falling into it. Whenever you put a piece of wood on it make sure that the, the wood falls away from the blade. As you get real big chunks of wood and you start going into your cut, the two pieces of wood will want to pinch on the blade as it gets down to just this last little bit. The weight is squeezing onto the blade. So I like to get to near the end and then just kind of push quick and it'll finish off that piece and it won't bind onto the blade and you won't lose too many RPM with it. Um, we'll get her fired up here and try it out. I made an idler pulley to help get that a little bit tighter, make it adjustable. I needed something along the top there to help keep it steady. Once it gets spinning, it should set fairly smooth. This is just a whisker fast, but I've got a piece of ironwood here. We'll try it. You can see it start moving and wobbling and chattering just a little bit. You can tell a lot by the end right here, where it's rubbing and getting hot, look for that. See that wobble? That's not what you want. You can also see on the wood right here where it's rubbing a little bit. This particular table has a little bit of wobble to it sideways. That little bit of wobble can really mess things up. So you want to be careful with that. It could go just a whisker faster.
Now some of the things too that have made quite a difference to my sawing is that when I set when I set the, the wood on there and I start sawing, I want to ease into it. And then also I, I like to hold my table a little bit to, to the outside of the dish and it keeps that from rubbing. Um, I wasn't planning on running it. I don't have my, my little shim in there tuned just right. So that's a little bit of a problem there and that, that's not quite in the right place. Um, I kind of had to throw it back together. I wasn't planning on using it and then all of a sudden I had to use it again. So I threw it back together to work. But that uh, hard act is really hard stuff and it's fairly dry too. But you can see what's going on there and this is really not what you want to see. You don't want to see too much burn in there because it's starting to pinch a little bit. It's harder. I could keep it from doing that if I was uh, using both hands. Um, when I'm trying to film and do it at the same time that makes it a little bit more difficult but um, having the saw properly lined up with the tractor I've got a little bit of bend in my pipe down there and I've, I've lost a little bit of my angle and the saw is tilted away from the tractor just a hair but um, it's really kind of a neat rig and it's you want to be real careful with it um, one of the things I don't ever do is get anywhere near this section right here and every time uh, I come and go I don't want anything that I can trip on you want to keep stuff out of the way the second you stop uh, respecting this thing it can really do a job on you so you want to be careful uh, uh, no kids or anything like that around it. Uh, make sure too that when you're sawing it, if you don't have this and it's just falling right here, none of the pieces fall against the blade while it's turning. Having a guard most of the way around is, is really the best way to do it. Um, I've just gotten started experimenting with this thing and I'll get some good steel and really do it upright later, but I just wanted to try it and get it working and see how it worked. Um, the serpentine belt has really taken quite a bit. Um, I lost one of my little ribs on the side here, but this is just an old junk belt, and that bugger works pretty darn good. Um, they're really strong. I had no idea those belts were that strong. And I can put some tension to it and keep it running pretty decent. But uh, be careful and have fun. And bottom line is, it's just another way of cutting wood.